Hello there. Welcome to this short learning path on MCP systems. As AI systems become deeply embedded in business operations, the Model Context Protocol, or MCP, is emerging as the bridge between language models and real-world data. But every bridge expands the attack surface. In this series, we'll unpack how to threat model MCP-enabled systems so that when your AI connects to the real world, it stays secure, trustworthy, and resilient. Large language models are great at handling general questions, things anyone could ask. But in the real world, that's not enough. To be useful, they need access to the specifics that matter to you. Without that context, their answers fall short. Take a bank, for example. An AI assistant can't answer, what's our risk exposure in Europe, if it's blind to the bank's own financial data. This is why context is everything. So how do we give the LLM the context they need? That's where the Model Context Protocol, or MCP, comes in. It's an open standard that lets language models connect to the data, tools, and systems an organization already uses. In short, MCP breaks down silos and makes AI assistance capable of delivering answers that actually matter. MCP solves the problem of isolation, but it also opens up a new one. By connecting language models directly to real systems, we risk turning AI assistance into potential super users if things aren't secured properly. First, there's data exposure and leakage. A misconfigured connector might give an AI assistant access to sensitive records. And once that data is exposed, there's no taking it back. Next, injection and manipulation attacks. An attacker could feed malicious input that tricks the assistant into abusing its connections, maybe altering records or triggering unintended actions. And finally, unauthorized access and escalation. If permissions aren't tightly controlled, an assistant could end up with more power than intended, moving from read-only into dangerous territory, like modifying or deleting data. In short, MCP doesn't just expand capabilities, it expands the attack surface. And that's why threat modeling is critical. When we build a threat model, the very first question is, what are we protecting? These are our assets, the things that have value and the things attackers will target. Assets can be data, systems, people, or processes. And every threat ties back to the risk of losing, exposing, or misusing one of these. In the MCP world, there are four broad categories of assets to think about. First, the user. The person interacting with the system, their identity, their intent, and their trust are all on the line. If attackers can spoof or mislead the user, the whole chain breaks down. Second, the LLM agent itself. This is the brain interpreting instructions. It can be manipulated, tricked, or forced into actions it wasn't meant to perform. Third, the MCP connectors. These are the bridges into real systems. If compromised, they can open the floodgates, exposing sensitive functions or data. And finally, the data sources. Whether it's financial records, medical information, or code repositories, this is the crown jewel the assistant is trying to use. Protecting the integrity and confidentiality of data is central to MCP security. So when we threat model MCP, these four assets, the user, the agent, the connectors, and the data, are the foundation for identifying where the risks live. When we threat model, we need a structured way to think about different kinds of attacks. That's where the STRIDE framework comes in. STRIDE breaks threats into six categories. Spoofing, 
pretending to be someone else. Tampering, altering data or requests, repudiation, denying actions without proof, information disclosure, leaking sensitive data, denial of service, disrupting availability, and privilege escalation, gaining more access than intended. By applying stride across MCP's assets and boundaries, we can systematically uncover where risks live and how to defend against them. The first boundary we need to think about is between the user and the LLM agent. This is a critical trust boundary. Two main stride categories apply here. First, spoofing. What if the user is not who they claim to be? An attacker could impersonate a legitimate user to gain access. Or, from the other side, what if the agent itself is spoofed, tricking the user into trusting responses from a malicious system? Second, repudiation. What happens if someone carries out a malicious action but later denies it? Without proper logging, a user could claim they never gave an instruction. Or, worse, the agent itself could execute actions that go unnoticed and unaccounted for. This boundary shows why authentication, trust, and auditability are so important before we even let the agent touch any real data. Moving into the agent to connector boundary, we see tampering, denial of service, and privilege escalation. Requests can be altered in transit, attackers could flood the connector with bogus instructions, or a prompt injection could push the agent into calling functions with more power than intended. Finally, at the connector to data source boundary, the biggest risks are information disclosure and tampering. A connector might pull far more data than necessary, leaking sensitive information, or worse, allow malicious queries that change or corrupt the data itself. So across this single flow, user to agent, agent to connector, and connector to data source, Stride gives us a systematic way to uncover where the risks live. And once we know the threats at each boundary, we can map in the right security controls, authentication, least privilege, rate limits, encryption, and monitoring. In short, Stride makes the invisible risks in MCP visible and that's the first step to securing them. We've seen how MCP connects language models to the real world, unlocking incredible new capabilities. But with every new connection comes new risk. Each bridge between the user, the agent, the connector, and the data expands the attack surface. That's why threat modeling matters. Stride gives us a way to see those risks before attackers do, to secure the path instead of patching it later. Whether you're building or deploying MCP, remember this. Security isn't a feature to add later. It's the foundation that makes the whole system trustworthy. Secure the bridge before you cross it. Till the next session, take care.